Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. Faith on Friday Presents is all about highlighting, inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share. Mm -hmm. We always have some really good conversations, and today is no different. So many of us understand this concept that life is life, and then it isn't. The question is... What are you planning right now to do to prepare for when life isn't life? Well, today my guest is going to help us with some of those questions, answers, and a really cool thing at the end. Please welcome Lynn Lambrecht. Hello, Lynn. Ricky, thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Lynn, this topic is something a lot of people don't talk about, a lot of people are scared of, but it needs to happen. Tell us about what you do, my friend. You know, I think the interesting part, I grew up with the ostrich family, the family that didn't want to talk about it, and their cute little heads were in the sand. And I completely understand. I mean, we all come from a different place. But I will tell you one of the greatest gifts that we can give ourselves while we're living and for our loved ones when we're not here any longer is the gift of a bit of organization and preparation while we're living. I love that. And so many of us don't even know what that means. That is wills, DNRs, anything that we can do. Oh, honey, now. it's home inventory. It's everything in your day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. that you, that we keep up here on autopilot because you know what you think and you know what you do. All but right. unless you relay that to another, mm -hmm. they don't. I mean, no. they don't have the specifics. And I can tell you, it's so much nicer when this stuff is done in advance. I mean, wow. I realize that I have seen some things that others haven't, right. but I just am an advocate for building our confidence now, right. making those decisions now, because dang it, I don't want the courts to do that for me. I know. And Expound each a little bit. makes that, you Expound know? Expound a little bit on that, because we literally are talking about when one day... It's life, y'all. Nobody gets out of it alive. But you're saying be organized now so yeah. that when life ends, nobody's running around in their grief, their pain. Their, they also don't have to be surprised by not knowing what to do. So give and me the, a little bit the, about what it is And the other about. side to that, Ricky, because mm -hmm. the yes, it's when we're not here. But in the case of my dad with his Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. he didn't have mm -hmm. mental capacity. So he wasn't here. And mm -hmm. there are ways physically and mentally that we are not running at 100% and we want someone to help us. Yeah. Well, to do that, we have to give permission. And permission is given through legal documents, mm -hmm. firstly, but it's also given through us sharing the information that they need to actually step in and help us if needed, mm -hmm. and then definitely step in and help close it out when we're not here. Yeah. Give me some examples, because, you know, most of us think of end of life as, as a will, and surely right. that's all there is, right? You know, the legal documents are an important part. And believe me, I am not an attorney. I have worked with them for, you know, 35 years, but I am not an attorney and I don't sell financial products and I don't sell insurance products. <laughs> right. I call myself the layperson advocate mm. because at the end of the day, the, the legal documents are necessary. And honestly, they're necessary from the age of 18 on. Oh. That is when our legal responsibilities begin mm -hmm. because we are responsible for paying our own bills. We're responsible for making our medical decisions. We're responsible for, you know, yes, voting. And yes, you right. can go in the military and all those fun things. But that's when the responsibilities begin. Even at your doctor's office, when is the last time you went to your primary care physician mm -hmm. and have you updated your HIPAA documentation, wow. which allows the doctor to contact someone should something happen to you and mm -hmm. you be unable. Mm -hmm. That starts when we're, we're when we're young. So we're just not taught this administrative side of life. And that's what drives me nuts. So that's why I want to go be a proactive cheerleader to take away the scary, to speak in layperson's terms and just say, you know what? It's a real confidence boost to know that I've got a safety net just in case yeah. and for when, 
Yeah, that's so good. Just in case and when. Because like you said, everyone's not going to have their full faculties at all times. You know, there That's... there may be things that you have to do paying someone else's bills. And, you know, a lot of us know people who have had to take on their parents' bills or take on the responsibilities of a child. Right. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes you don't even know where to begin. You you may not even know where your parents bank, let well, alone. And why would you have. unless you have a conversation? And mm -hmm. so now I was the pain in the butt in my family. I admit it, y'all. Um, I am the afterthought in the ch the children pecking order. I was the um, <clears throat> bonus child. And in that, I was able to observe all of my young life. And what's hilarious is when I started asking and pe peppering with questions, yeah. I said, I want to protect your privacy. I'm not like going to want to, I don't want to be nosy Nelly. But are you two talking about this stuff? And can somebody help you if something happens? And how, you know, if you're counting on me to help you, mm, you might have to have some conversation. And I would just every like quarter, yeah. I would drip, drip, drip and drip, drip, drip and drip, drip, drip and drip, drip, drip. <laughs> and I drove them nuts. Right. You know, it's almost like it's, um, yeah, my brother and sister, I drove them nuts, too, because they didn't want to talk about it either. Sure. So I, you know, I'm just that perpetual gum on the shoe. Well, let me ask you, what kind of questions did you ask or what can someone ask if they want to start these conversations with the people in their lives? The best um, way that I finally was able to kind of get through is if you it, do you want me to help you if something ever happens? Mm -hmm. And when that answer was yes, then I'm going to ask you to please help me help you. And therefore, I would like to at least know where to find this, this, you know, like whether it's your bank account. I mean, it th my parents were older, so we didn't have the online world, but our world is a little more complex. Yeah. You know, so I mean, we don't even get snail mail anymore. Everything's online. Mm -hmm. So if you needed to come in and actually see a utility bill with an account number, right. unless I have printed that out and have it stored somewhere my if someone walking into my place wouldn't know mm -hmm. so yes i know i'm over the top and um you know my, as my siblings will tell you i was dropped by aliens but <laughs> i print a cut when i'm grumbling doing my taxes every year i kind of take a look at all my stuff and so i take a, a, a you know a copy and i put it in like a little plastic sheet and have it in a binder and so whether it's my ids or all my utilities or you know um, official like my where you live do you have a rental agreement or a home agreement do you have insurance do you have your you know what are all your financial accounts all that crazy stuff that we just do on autopilot yeah okay if somebody else needed to step in what would they need? So wow. it's my official trail of breadcrumbs mm, I because I that. want someone to have a trail of breadcrumbs so they can say, yeah. oh, crap, my God, she's got a lot of online accounts. What a pain. <laughs> but, you know, at least, you know, I have them. Um, I, I yeah. start in the online world and it, I have to tell you, I drove myself nuts. Anytime I had to enter in a username and a mm -hmm. password. I, I jotted the name of the uh, of it, you know, right. down on a, just a running piece of paper. Sure. Now I've added the security questions mm -hmm. and the multi-factor authentication tools. I mean, you guys, it's never ending. I mean, this adulting thing is not for the yeah. week. It, it is truly for not the faint at heart. But so you're you're talking to people about, you know, hey, this is what we need. This is what you're going to need. How can I help you help mm -hmm. me help you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, asking those questions can be hard because a lot of people don't want to do it. Oh, it'll be fine. Oh, I'll take care of it later. Or I won't be here and I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. I heard that from my mom. I mean, it was pretty hilarious, actually, because I looked at her and I said, well, of course you're going to think about it, me taking care of it. But how am I going to take care of it if I don't know what it, what it is. is? Yeah. And it's different than if you will have an, an executor of your estate. Because this is more of having somebody, for the lack of a better term, in your business now so that later when and how. Well, later and that comes. person could be the executor. And I'll sure. tell you the one thing I, I learned with my parents, they didn't know what to ask. And mm -hmm. that was what kept them quiet. 
And so when I, I mean, my, they had done some legal documents after my sister was born. I was the other as born. I did not take it personally, (laughs) but you know, it was really kind of interesting because I kind of started talking around it the other way. Um, I knew that, you know, they, we all went to church. We all did, you know, those things. And I said, okay, talk to me. Yeah. What kind of service? What, what are your favorite Great readings? Question. What are your favorite readings? What are your favorite songs? Mm-hmm. You know, is this something where you would want to have um, a visitation? Mm-hmm. Would you want to, you know, this, what, now tell me, what right. do you think? Is it cremation or burial? Mm-hmm. You know, where are you with Great that question. one? And then I kind of sat back and I said, now let's talk about you being here. Tell me what quality of life means to you. Mm -hmm. They said, well, what do you mean? And I said, what are the things that you love to listen to? What are the things that you love to see? What are the things that, you know, you like to, that feel good? What is, what's, what smells good? What tastes good? Cause I, I call it my five senses game okay. because at the end of the day, when dad d- didn't know me for the last three and a half years of his life, but I knew he wanted to be outside on the deck, feeding the birds, like with Nat King Cole on in the background. And, you know, I mean, I knew the things yeah. that mattered. I knew my mom wanted something really, really soft. Mm-hmm. And, you know, <laughs> she, she was much more the Rosemary Clooney and Ella Fitzgerald kind of okay. guy. And, you know, we had, I mean, we, cause we always had Sunday morning music yeah. after church. But you got to ask the questions before, you know, and like you said, and people, because people don't talk about it. And a lot of that can be cultural it in can. the culture that I grew up with. Guess what? You don't talk about sex money and dying Mm -hmm. you know not that any of those things were going to happen but (laughs) it's not something you talk about so now I'm at the age where I'm talking to my parents now you yeah. know, hey, what do you guys want to be or do? And it is a strange conversation, though, Lynn. I, ca- I call it parenting the parents. And I think what's interesting is, at least in my case, I realized they had been independent a whole lot longer yeah. in life than I had. And right. I wanted to maintain dignity. Mm-hmm. I wanted them to have something they could control. Yeah. Because I think in some ways they feel like that's slipping away. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, hold on, you're the one that's driving the bus here. Yeah. That's so, so let, good. let me honor what you want. I want to make sure that you're not like giving me any guff from heaven. Right. Let's just, <laughs> let's, let's just, I mean, mom, I know you, you're going to be right. like giving me guff from some, from yeah. somewhere. And you know, <laughs> oh, I don't want to, I don't want lightning to hit. Right. So, I tended to use humor a little bit. Sure. But it was also, I think, um, part part of because of my work circumstances mm-hmm. that they knew I was hyper aware of all yeah. of this. And so that, you know, they gave me a little bit of grace with that and a little allowance, but um, I was the perpetual drip. Okay. So you, we're going to have to bring this up. So you mentioned what you did before. Can you briefly tell us what it was you used to do? I was in aviation, in global aviation and leadership positions around the world, but I was also um, a volunteer emergency team responder. So I worked airplane crash sites. Um, I was with two different airlines, and the first airline I worked, um, two crashes in my 20s, and the second I worked 9-11. So those are the days that you say, say, I mean, I don't know, I chose to always serve from that standpoint and make sure that there could be as much support and resources needed. And this could be for the person on the other end that I was helping. But it's also something humbling for me, where I wake up every morning and with the preciousness of life and say, yeah. it's a great day to have a great day. That's because awesome. Because you know what? We're here and let's yeah. live our lives fully while we're here. That's so true. So Lynn, tell us now about what it is you do, the name of your company and what you're doing with folks. I founded the Living Planner when we um, actually initiated hospice for my mom. And so my dad had died before mom um, and I was living and working out of country again. And same when I found out about my dad's Alzheimer's, I was out of country in, mm-hmm. in year four of an assignment. And when I was in year four of another assignment in a different country, my mom was failing. Sure. So I didn't renew my contract and I came back and I thought, you know what? 
Let's work proactively. This reactive stuff, we can't grieve in the moment. And then when things haven't happened, we all deserve to process emotion. And so the living planner was born and it was born from the concept of we have amazing professionals across all sectors from financial to insurance, to law, to all end of life, to, you know, the funeral side, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But who tied it together with it? What happens in our day-to-day life? Okay. And I thought, I'm going to be the one to be the layperson interpreter and talk about it. So I wrote wow. a book and it's called The Living Planner, What to Prepare Now While You Are Living. And Ricky, I'm laughing. I have just done my second to last final review of my 2023 edition because I updated every year because awesome. national and state laws change. And yeah. I I'm not getting into all the specifics of every state, but I am looking at congressional legislation and the national piece that comes into play. So I'm almost there with 2023. Um, Then I started doing some things for younger families. I I call it a well-being checkup Mm -hmm. where we literally kind of evaluate all aspects of life and talk to them, you know, about, Hey, could you help your parents? And what are you doing for your kids? And you know, but what have you done for yourself? And boom, boom, boom. And I, I drill them and we do this and we literally kind of unpack and unpeel the onion. Mm -hmm. And then I do a gap analysis and give them some recommendations after. That's crazy. There's so much stuff in this. And so, and, and so many, I can't say so many people need it because literally everybody needs this, but not everybody wants to do this. So let me ask you, Lynn, if somebody wanted to work with you, how would be the best way to get in touch with you? I think the first, there are a couple of ways. One, you can always send me an email, Lynn, L-Y-N-N at thelivingplanner.com. The second way is you can always go check out my website just to kind of see what I got. Um, and it up, you'll see up in the top right, I now have some online courses so you can do it yourself. Right. But it's the um, thelivingplanner.com. Awesome. Um, and you know what? I'm on social media sites too and different things, but I think you'll probably be posting that information later. It's funny you said that. You all, she is exactly right. Don't worry if you haven't gotten her information. We're going to put it all in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share. And if you or someone you know has an interesting story, an inspiring topic, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com, select connect, and send me an email. I want to hear from you. Lynn, my friend. Yes. Before I let you go. I'm ready. I don't know what she's going to ask you guys. I was just prepared. She was prepared me for something. As a surprise. That's right. This is our game. And the game is called this or that. Pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things and you off the top of your head. Just tell me which one you like the best. Are okay. you ready to play? Yes, ma'am. All right. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Ooh, read the book or see the movie? Read the book. Wallflower or Life of the Party? Wallflower. Summertime or Winter Wonderland? Both. Ooh, very nice. Where is it located, Lynn? Hmm? Where are you? Where are you located? Oh, now? Well, I've lived in 17 places in 35 years, (laughs) but I am now in Southern California. And right, so this morning I had... um, 32 degree morning and now it's 60. Okay. No wonder you like them both. All right. So do you eat to live or live to eat? I eat to live. Mm. Out in nature or I'd rather be in the house. Nature. Mm. Coke or Pepsi? Neither. Good I, don't drink, move. I, I don't drink pop. Awesome. Let's see. Drive or ride? Eh, drive. Okay. I like sports or I don't care. Love them. Awesome. What's your favorite sport? Depends on the season. I like it. My kind of girl. (laughs) Lynn, and finally, what was your first job? First job, not as a W-2, but as a first job was babysitting. First W-2 job? Mm -hmm. Honey, I was dipping ice cream at the brand new mall in my town in Moline, Illinois. 
I love it. Lynn, I had stuff on my arm. I'm dipping in. Oh, you guys, it was a blast. I think we all had so much fun at our first job. It was so cool. Lynn, thank you so much for joining us and for talking to us about this really important subject. But you all, Lynn also reminded me to tell you that she has a free offer for you and it's going to be in the description below. So please go down there and check it out. You all, again, thank you for joining us and this won't be the last time. We'll see you next time on Faith on Friday Presents.